To begin to make the perfect pie crust, you want to start with three cups of um, all-purpose flour here. You want to add a teaspoon and a half of salt, so that's what we have right here. You're going to add, need to add in some fat of some kind, so you, I'm going to add in a cup of shortening. I prefer to use that just because that's what my mom has always used. I think it gives the best, most tender, flaky crust. If you really hate the taste of the shortening, you could certainly do a half cup shortening, a half cup butter. You also could do all, one cup butter, but again, you just want to be careful when you're mixing it because the temperature of butter changes more than the shortening, so it could easily kind of warm up a little. And in general, when you're making a pie crust, you want to keep most of your ingredients cool. So again, I'm going to be using shortening. And I have just a stick here, which is a cup. It's really critical to have a pastry blender. You can get these in any store. They're really handy to have. And it's a good way to work the shortening into the flour without getting your hands in there. You don't want to be kneading it like you're making bread. You want to keep your hands out of, out of that as much as possible. We do have to use our hands at the end. But it keeps anything oops, <laughs> from overheating. So you're just kind of working this in and you kind of push it through. Kind of let it fall over. And you want to kind of get, you probably have seen in recipes, kind of little pebbles. That's what we're going for here. I don't make too much of a mess. Kind of push it through. There's no need to be afraid of it. People I think think this is really sharp or something, but it's, it's not. So just kind of tilt the bowl lift up a little to fold it in just work it in if you don't have a pastry blender the best substitution is two butter knives and you would just take the butter knives and cross them through that just kind of cuts the fat that you have the shortening in and mimics the pastry blender this just gives you the most uniform um, mixture here so we're just going to keep making sure get that all worked in get all the flour from the bottom kind of lift it. I, this is kind of just a technique I do to kind of fold it over to make sure you get everything. So once you have this cut in, you're going to add your liquid ingredients. This recipe is a teaspoon of white vinegar, uh, an egg, and a half of cup of ice cold water. It's important, as I mentioned before, you want to keep as many of the ingredients cool as possible. That prevents gluten strands from form forming in the dough. You don't mind having the gluten strands if you were making bread, but in a pie crust, you want to try and keep that at a minimum. So over here, I have the mixture of the, the egg, the vinegar, and the ice cold water. And I've just kind of beat this together a little bit. And you just kind of want to add this, usually about a third at a time. To begin with, I'm going to just kind of use a fork or something to work it in. Just Okay, add some more. And at the last, when you add that last third, you're going to have to get your hands in there and you're going to have to get a little dirty with the dough. Get in there, don't be shy. To make it all come together. You can see it's coming together now, but not all the way. So we're going to add the last bit. it in. If you're wanting to make a savory pie crust, at this point you would just add in your chopped herbs. So if you had some thyme, some rosemary, some chives, anything you wanted, you can certainly make this a savory crust. Okay, so at this point, I know I said you really don't want to use your hands too much, but oh, there's really, you know, at some point you just kind of have to get in. You just don't want to take your palm that's more heated than the rest of your hand and really work it like you would um, bread. So you're just kind of trying to gently kind of get everything together. Getting the rest of that flour off the bottom. and Kind of make it into a, um, make it into a big ball. Just kind of working it in. OK, 
Okay, so then when you have it, this makes two pie crusts, so you can freeze it. You, if you're only you know using one for now, freeze the other one for up to, for a month or so. Will be fine. So you have a nice big ball, and then you could just take a knife or something, cut it in half. I'll just kind of do it with my finger. You want to roll it up and then flatten it out just a bit. That helps it just cool more evenly in the fridge because even if you're, you know, if you're using this one pie crust right now, you do want to let it sit in the fridge for about a half hour to um, cool down. That just also helps prevent additional um, gluten strands from forming. And again, just all this in the end just helps make a more flaky, tender pie crust.